Hello and welcome back. This is the second video uh, in the series explaining uh, Feynman's lectures on physics, volume 3. And uh, we started off with the first chapter uh, explaining what is quantum behavior, how is it different, uh, how did it evolve, um, and uh, we even discussed uh, why it is difficult to understand. Uh, yeah. So now uh, in this video, uh, we'll be, like uh, like I said in the last video, we saw that uh, um, atomic uh, uh, objects like uh, uh, electrons, protons, neutrons, photons, all these they don't behave uh, uh, either like a particle or like a wave, right? So um, so in this uh, from this video onwards, we'll be doing a couple of experiments. Uh, so in this video, we'll be doing an experiment with a particle. Here in this case, we'll take bullet as an example of a particle, and we'll be doing an exam uh, an experiment with bullets. So um, in the next video, we'll be discussing uh, an experiment with with a wave, and then we'll uh, in the uh, in the coming forthcoming videos, we'll uh, contrast or distinguish the behavior of um, you know an atomic particle like electron with the behavior exhibited by these bullets and waves, right? So how that is different. So um, why do we need, uh, why do we need to mention quantum behavior separately? So uh, that will be uh, evident uh, in the forthcoming videos. So yeah, in this video, as I said, we'll be doing an experiment with bullets. So for this experiment, we need a um, machine gun. So here is our machine gun, say, right? Um, then uh, we need a wall of armor or, you know, armor plate, right? With uh, two slits, okay? So, yeah, here we have, here we have two slits. Right, uh, this is our wall of armor, and then we need a backstop. Backstop is like, um, yeah, a wall, maybe. Right, this is our backstop. Okay, so, um, and may maybe this is a you know, wall of wood, maybe. Okay, wooden wall, right? So, uh, and we need a detector, you know, to detect the bullets as and when they hit it. Um, right, this is a moving detector, so it will be like moving, uh, um, you know, vertically on this wall of wood, maybe. Yeah, so okay, so this is our arrangement. So we have this the machine gun, um, uh, the, the experiment is like the machine gun shoots a stream of bullets, right, um, in an angular speed randomly right so it like shoots a stream of bullets randomly and uh, it's in an angular way right? right you get it so it's not a very good uh, gun so uh, uh, it like shoots in an angular way randomly okay now in front of the gun uh, there is a wall right made of armor plate um uh, so these uh, bullets might pass through this, the slit or the slit, or they may hit this wall and bounce back. So there are these opportunities. Suppose, uh, you know, uh, this goes here, this bullet goes here, and, you know, it, um, you know, strikes back in the wall like this. Right? Suppose uh, this bullet goes here, this also strikes the wall back here. Right? Okay, uh, there are a few lucky bullets which get through the slits. Okay, so um, they manage to get into the slits and they strike the back wall, right? Okay, so this uh, detector, uh, suppose this is a box of sand, right? So it will, uh, the bullet will go get into this box and get stuck, right? Okay, so um, in... Um, in front of this box, this detector is there. It, it keeps moving. So as soon as it, uh, um, it uh, you know, a bullet wheezes inside, like through the slit, it can be caught easily with this um, box, right? 
okay so it accumulates it keep it keeps on accumulating bullets now uh, these bullets are assumed to be indestructible right that is um, uh, like even if they hit they don't break into two parts or two or three pieces so uh, we assume these bullets to be indestructible so when we count the number of bullets in like after we complete this experiment we count the number of bullets which has been uh, accumulated in this box and um, what what are we interested in why why are we doing this experiment so we have we are interested to find the probability that a bullet which passes through these slits that is either of these slits this one or two right uh, which passes through either of these slits will arrive at the backstop right at a distance x from the center like suppose this um, this bullet uh, some bullet arrives at this point so we we are interested in this distance like suppose this distance is x um, so uh, the to find the probability of a bullet which passes through these holes right they arrive at the backstop at a distance x from the center right okay now uh, so how will uh, what will the graph be like how many bullets will be falling at what place right if you get through this hole you'll you'll be diverted to the center even if you come through this pass through hole 2 this bullet will also reach the center so there'll be a greater accumulation in the center right and in the corners there'll be very less so the graph will be somewhat like this right so it is bulging near the center and it is uh, less near the corners right this is our graph this is our probability graph if we see right okay so uh, let's call this uh, probability graph as p12 right because the bullets may have come either through hole 1 or hole 2 in this case so in either of these case majority of bullets would be in near the center because they'll be diverted to the center um, since the holes will be really small so you'll have lots of bullets accumulated in the center region and in the corners you'll have very less number of bullets right the probability of getting a bullet in the corners will be very less right and we also see this graph has this maximum value it reaches its maximum value at the center right okay that is x is equal to zero suppose we take this center uh, axis as zero right fine now we next examine two more cases that is first um, we close lit one right we close lit one one second yeah so we consider the same condition this is our machine gun uh, we have this wall of armor and we've closed the slit one we just have the slit two open right the slit two is open right and this uh, back wall is there as it is this is our back wall right and we have this detector okay right so only this slit is open now how will the distribution graph be let's see so um, any bullet like this uh, again uh, shoots randomly so any bullet which goes here will be bouncing back right or uh, will be bounced off this plate right so this will also bounce back but the bullets which is actually going through this slit might you know um, go through the slit and it will reach um, the backstop somewhere right so this might reach here suppose so what happens is majority of bullets which will go pass through this hole they'll be reaching this region majorly right majority of the bullets will be reaching this region so there will be a bulge like here uh, there won't be any bullets so here suddenly there'll be a bulge here there won't be any bullets and here suddenly they'll see a bulge right so this is the graph plot for this uh, when we close this first slit so the first slit is closed in this case right so we get this sort of graph this is 
P2 because the bullets are passing only through the second hole in this case. Similarly, if we consider uh, the third case, wherein we'll close the second one, right? Here goes our um, machine gun. So here is our wall. So we have the first slit open. The second slit is closed, right? First slit is open, second slit is closed. And you have this black backstop or back wall, say. And you have the sandbox, right? To detect the bullets. Now, as usual, our uh, machine gun shoots more bullets. And the bullets which strike here, here, all these regions, they just bounce back. They don't get through. And the bullets which go through this region, they actually are able to go to reach the backstop. They, they go to the sand detector, right? So you will get majority of bullets in this region, right? So you will get a bulge here, actually, in the graph, right? So this is the graph which you'll get in this case. And this graph we'll call as P1 because this uh, only slit 1 is open. This is the slit 2 is closed, right? Okay, so we got, we saw these three cases, right? So uh, the first case when both the slits were open, uh, we got this graph like, um, in a sense, uh, the, the bulge was in the middle, right? The maximum was in the middle. Now uh, we closed one slit, that is we closed the first slit. We got a bulge here right uh, near the second slit and similarly when we close the second slit we got a bulge near the plus first slit right so um, now do you actually get that uh, this uh, p12 graph is a combination of p1 and p2 uh, separately right you if you combine these two graphs right um, this gives you the p12 graph Right? So if you if you combine P two uh, is bulged here, P one is bulged here. So if they if you combine the probability values of P one and P two, you'll get this graph, right? You'll get this maximum value at the center, uh, right? You have uh, you know some value here, some value here. So this will be uh, doubled, and the rest of the values are normal, right? So you get this um, this kind of graph, right? So combining P one and P two. Um, we get a sort of like, um, one second, uh, we get a graph like uh, this, that is one graph was bulging here, the other graph was bulging here, right? So we get this sort of graph and this graph is like if you have to give, an, um, give this as a one graph, that is uh, you combine these two parts of it you get this kind of bulging in the middle right so yeah so this is p1 2 right so thus we find from this experiment that p12 is equal to p1 plus p2 Th that is the effect with both holes open is the sum of the effects with each hole open alone, right? That is, uh, here both 1 and 2 was open, here only 1 was open, here only 2 is open. So, this effect, combined effect, is due to, you know, it's 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 the sum of the individual effects. That is, uh, sum, uh, with one hole open, um, that effect combined with the second hole open, right? So, uh, this observation, uh, is what we get from this, uh, uh, you know, experiment with bullets. And we, um, for, for, for the sake of this uh, experiment, let's tag this as, here we have no interference. I'll tell you what an interference is when we discuss the next uh, experiment, which we'll be performing with waves. We'll, we'll perform a similar experiment where we won't release these bullet particles, but wave waves, right? So we'll see what an interference is at that point of time. So for now, let's just see that there is no interference. There is only the effect of one um, and the effect of the other combined. That, that gives the combined effect P12.
right so here there are no um, in, in there, there are no more other terms involved so we say that there is no interference in this case so uh, stay tuned to know what is interference and uh, in the next video uh, i'll meet you with another experiment which we'll be performing with waves right hope you enjoyed um, and uh, let's be in the next video thank you bye bye